One is about uh, random matrices and multifractality in uh, condensed matter. <coughs> Another one is about wild fermions in condensed matter. So today here, the two events meet. So it's a joint event also for people here uh, at the Institute. And uh, thank you very much for coming. And I pass the word to uh, Fyodor Kuzmarsev, who is one of the organizers of the uh, wild fermions event. So he will present the speaker. Th thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> it's actually a, it's a great pleasure for me and honor to present a distinguished speaker today, and uh, Zahid Hassan, who is a Eugene Higgins professor of Princeton University. So and uh, so he uh, came from Bangladesh. He studied in Bangladesh high education, and then he's uh, studied in Austin University, quantum gravity theoretical project, considering uh, generalized Einstein equations, some first loop corrections, diagram techniques, so a very successful project under Steven Weinberg. And uh, then he asked Steven Weinberg what to choose, and Steven Weinberg told him that uh, now it's most excited area in condensed metaphysics. It's emerging phenomena, high TC materials, novel materials, quantum Hall effect. So, and uh, so he decided to move to Stanford to study uh, high energy physics, uh, experimental in SLAC and accelerated center. And uh, he has the idea to develop new method based on momentum X-ray resonance scattering, which helps to investigate the band structure. So different properties of the band structure. So it was some kind of complementary method to X-ray photoemission spectroscopy neutron scattering, resonant neutron scattering, elastic neutron scattering. He was very successful in this, developing new method, new beam line. It was joined between Berkeley and Stanford. <coughs> so then uh, after that, he got some postdoctoral fellowship, uh, distinguished Robert Dickey Fellowship in Princeton, but it was not very long. After one semester, he got faculty position in Princeton and uh, started his uh, research laboratory, right? And uh, developed research laboratory, which he is doing simultaneously both theory and experiments, right? So in some sense, it's STM what he's doing, MBE, molecular beam epitaxy. So then ARPES for the emission types, he can do samples in situ, MBI, immediately check them. And the same time he's doing many body DFT, which complementary different correlation function, response function, which people do the same time simultaneously for this material to get properties of this material and, uh, and to find what is most interesting, helps to understand physics. So uh, and now he's already 70 years in Princeton and has office uh, neighboring to Phil Anderson, Duncan Haldane, and so he has a lot of uh, con continued conversation and pre influence all these people. And uh, he made uh, most uh, distinguished discoveries in condensed metaphysics and was named as the most influential mind in physics for 10, some kind of breakthrough in physics. So I can very difficult to list all his discoveries in topological materials and very semi-metals. So it's just uh, it's a very long list, uh, his prices. He was in Lovebara, give more lecture, that's what. It's what we can do from our side <laughs> to contribute his prices. And uh, so he has more, more than 40,000 citations. He has um, plenty of students. One of his students is already a full professor in Caltech, another one in Harvard. So it's a lot of interesting stuff going on around. So <laughs> it's great pleasure uh, to have him here. So and uh, uh, so, so that's why I would like to give these words, he will tell us um, about latest uh, discoveries, about these exciting directions, which are dedicated to our program of this well fermions and condensed matter. And uh, so when he is participating in, in this as well, so then he will give today one lecture, tomorrow will be another one from 1.30 in the same office. So it's got some kind of joint from both programs. So everybody welcome. So we have serious lectures already whole week was excited and uh, that's more or less, if I anything forgotten, please, I'm sure you will tell it. Please, Professor. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I think uh, is, uh, th this is good, good enough. Thank you. I mean, I um, thank you for a nice uh, intro introduction. I, I did not know. I mean, I did all that thing, <laughs> but yeah, it, it's 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 exciting. I mean, there, there are a lot of interesting physics happening in the last 10, 20 years. Uh, okay, so I am certainly not going to talk all that. We did talk about what I have done, but uh, this particular talk will focus on topological materials, especially uh, how topological insulators uh, gave rise to vile semi-metals and uh, so that particular path. And uh, also this is not meant to be a in-depth theory talk. It's mostly about how these material, these concepts, theory concepts were realized in real materials. So I'll mention theory only in that context, in the context of experiments. And in terms of experiments, uh, I'll also not be uh, talking a lot about transport. It, I'll talk a little bit transport, but mostly spectroscopy where uh, uh, the, the effects, the topological effects have been, at least so far, uh, most clear. Okay, so that's sort of the uh, setting of the talk. And uh, so if you think like uh, some 20 years back, if you're teaching, or maybe even 10 years back, you're, you're teaching current matter physics, you tell that it's about metals, insulators, superconductors, magnets, and their phase transitions among these states of matter. And uh, say Kittel's book or Ashcroft Marmin book, uh, you'll find a, a, a quantum mechanical description of these states of matter. And uh, each of these are uh, distinct states of matter. But uh, what is the surprising thing or the excitement in current matter is that uh, in last 10 years or so, uh, theorists and experimentalists working together uh, have discovered a number of phases of matter that, uh, that are not, that uh, these, those phases don't fit into any of these categories. And uh, so this talk is mostly about that, how or why they don't fit into this category. So it, 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 with this initial slide, I'll uh, just mention one example, uh, topological insulator, uh, for example. Uh, so topological insulators are conducting on the surface and insulating in the bulk, but this is not an accident of surface chemistry. No matter how you chop the bulk, as soon as you open up a boundary, a surface, it will be conducting. So, so you cannot, it's not neither a uh, fully conductor or fully insulator. Right, so, uh, so there must be, uh, whereas uh, a band insulator that you learn in a textbook scenario, the, uh, a band insulator can always, not only it's in the bulk, uh, it's also, uh, you, can, uh, you can find, a, you can make the surface uh, insulating at the same time, and it doesn't, uh, you can choose the surface uh, uh, to, uh, and the, uh, without deforming the state, you can, have a surface insulator and bulk insulator, but here your bulk is insulating, the surface is conducting, and it's not an accident of choice of surface, okay? So then this classification, so th there must be a phase transition between the two. I'll talk about one of these, that, uh, and that phase transition uh, uh, is telling you that it's a distinct state of matter. Similarly, uh, so this, uh, with this example, we see that uh, topology, uh, or if you come from a math point of view, topology is, one way to describe topology is considered bulk boundary correspondence. Uh, if there is a non-trivial topology in the bulk, its signature will be in the boundary. So the, uh, the, the fact that the, this topological insulator's bulk is non-trivial uh, or distinct from a conventional insulator, it, it can be seen on the boundary. So this bulk boundary correspondence or bulk boundary uh, distinction can be applied not only to insulators but to many other phases like magnets, semi-metals, or superconductors. So then, so that means this classification scheme or this way of thinking about uh, states of matter 
is, is broader than that. It's, it's, it goes beyond uh, classifying symmetries uh, or spontaneously broken symmetry. So, uh, so then in last 10 years or so, we have seen topological semi-metals, uh, topological magnets, topological superconductors, and uh, a number of other phases of matter. So, uh, so certainly, uh, certainly uh, uh, a number of this, this, this topological concepts uh, gave rise to a number of novel states of matter that uh, ex uh, experimentalists uh, have not been uh, uh, either have not been exploring or have not utilized to uh, uh, realize other effects in devices and um, in other settings. So, uh, so in this talk, I'm not, I, do, I, I will not have time to talk about all these phases. I will focus on insulators and semi-metals, a little bit of magnet. I'll skip superconductors, although we are doing a lot, a uh, lot of that stuff. Okay. So, what is kind of the historical origin? How topology entered kind of matter physics? This was highlighted by 2016 Nobel Prize that uh, uh, quantization of uh, Hall conductivity, uh, this quantum number is actually a topological quantum number. And uh, in, the, in, the, in the context of the Hall measurements, Hall experiments, it gives you a counter of the edge state. So that's the boundary states. Uh, the, the bulk is insulating, uh, but the boundary is conducting. And this, uh, you can, uh, and this, uh, this quantum number is, it's related to the Berry curvature field of the occupied electron bands. So then, uh, so it's it's the bulk band structure, essentially determining which of the insulating, uh, which of the uh, insulating states will have the boundary mode. So why is this experimentally interesting? Uh, the original quantum Hall state, uh, of which in modern parlance you can call it a topological insulator in 2D, uh, is that uh, this this edge state, the, 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 this edge conduction is a robust property of the system. You can have some degree of disorder or imperfection in the system, but the Hull quantization, quantization is extremely precise. And it's, it's uh, pre preci the precision level is like one parts in a billion. So that, uh, that was a very surprising thing when uh, quantum Hall effect was uh, discovered in the 80s. So this precision level is the, the, this uh, this level of precision is tied to the fact that uh, there is a topological quantum number, a topolog uh, quantum number involved, and this uh, uh, edge state is topologically protected. Okay, so that's the beginning of the fun, uh, and it took uh, a, a decade or two to realize that uh, this topological quantization or topological effects could be, uh, uh, could appear in different disguises or with uh, different types of interaction. So in the quantum Hall physics, you apply a field and then you create a chiral edge states. You use your right hand or red left hand rule and that, uh, that, gives you, uh, uh, that gives you a real space picture. Where is the edge current, boundary current, and where is the uh, bulk insulator. So if you, try, if you take this setting and consider dispersion relations of electrons that are involved and plot that in energy momentum space, you'll see that the bulk bands, there is a gap, band gap, that's why it's insulating, but on the boundary it's conducting, so there is a chiral edge state. So there's K plus state, but there's no K minus analog state. So in other words, the, the momentum, energy momentum space or dispersion relation of this electron uh, electrons in this quantum Hall state is is uh, uh, represented here. So uh, this is another way of uh, representing this thing. There is a edge state, uh, edge electron, uh, a chiral edge electron moving in one direction. So one can hypothetically think that is it possible that we have uh, counter propagating edge states. If we have counter-propagating edge states, so here this chirality 
is defined by the direction, or the, the fact that you have a magnetic field that gives you the, uh, defines your handedness of the system. Uh, this is why it's chiral. And now one could ask that, is it possible to have counter-propagating edge state? Uh, so that means you have filled up and then uh, uh, edge states in one direction and then filled down edge state in the other direction. But in that case, your net hull conductivity, charge hull conductivity is zero, right? Uh, but then uh, you could also, one could also think of two copies of integer quantum hull state, but not through the real magnetic field, but uh, uh, a, a interaction that is already in the electronic band structure, the spin orbit interaction. Spin orbit interaction is the relativistic term where there's a dependent uh, 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 magnetic field-like uh, interaction term, right? So then, uh, is it possible that you have spin up going this way or spin down going this way? And is it, uh, is such uh, state topologically protected? You can clearly see that it's not topologically protected by the churn number, the, 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 uh, interac uh, the one I, I showed. Uh, it's got luck somewhere. Let me. Yeah. So, uh, so churn number is zero because Hull conductivity is zero, but it may be protected by some other topological invariant. Churn number is not the only topological invariant, and that is the new thing here. Uh, in uh, so it turns out that you can think of parity of the wave functions or churn parity. You can define some sort of parity uh, uh, related uh, topological invariant. So it turns out it, uh, that was identified by Kane and Milley. Uh, there's a Z2 invariant. It's related to the parity of the wave functions. It's not churn number that's protecting this state. There is another new topological invariant that could protect uh, such a state. Now you can see here uh, these two copies of the integer quantum Hall state, uh, uh, this integer quantum Hall state breaks time reversal. Once you have a magnetic field, uh, the time reversal uh, invariance is broken, but here you restore time reversal symmetry, and the Z2 invariant is related to that uh, time reversal symmetry. Now, this crossing, now you can see that the low energy degrees of freedom around this crossing is, de uh, is described by the Dirac equation. So that's how Dirac physics entered uh, topological materials. Uh, so it, it's this thing. Now, you can also think of uh, generalizing this state in 3D, uh, uh, starting thinking of the integer quantum, in a gen in thinking of generalizing the integer quantum Hall state in 3D, you would think that you stack them then you have the chiral edge states, then the edge states become surface states, but that doesn't cover top and bottom, right? So, uh, but then here, the, uh, the, 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 the interaction term that is creating these states are spin orbit. So, uh, a spin orbit, we, we, for spin orbit, we don't, we're not choosing a direction. So, the spin orbit interaction, uh, because of the spin orbit interaction not choosing a direction, we can, uh, general, this can be generalized to 3D. So in other words, all these surfaces, including top and bottom surfaces, one could have uh, a Dirac cone, um, uh, unpaired Dirac cone state. And then the, uh, this unpaired state uh, uh, is spin momentum locked. Uh, in full theoretical detail, this state is described by four invariants. I'm not going to get into that, that part of it, but you can sort of visualize this from here that once you uh, create a time reversal state out of this quantum Hall state by considering two copies, then you have a Dirac band structure. Uh, but then when you consider its generalization in 3D, then on the surface, you have a surface Dirac cone. Now, uh, that, that looks like graphene, except that you have reduced degrees of freedom. So this, uh, this is uh, unpaired Dirac cone. So then uh, physically what it, now if I go back and draw the real space picture, then you have uh, spin up uh, uh, electrons moving in, uh, 
propagating in one direction, the spin down propagating in the other direction, and this is happening in all surfaces. So this is kind of like a real space visualization of this topological state. And it's not tied to the choice of the surface. I can cut open some funny, uh, cut it open in some funny direction, and uh, in all directions there will be uh, states like that. Uh, in addition, there may be trivial surface states, but these states will be there. And this is de because this is determined by the bulk invariance. Okay, so that's kind of a um, uh, uh, kind of a conceptual review without going into the theory. Uh, so then, then, then next we ask the experimental question, how do we know, how do we detect these states, or how do we probe their property? So there, again, we look at the quantum Hall physics, and we see that these... Uh, th uh, these quantum Hall, this, uh, uh, this topological quantum numbers, they just came directly from transport because uh, uh, quantum Hall physics was discovered through transport. So uh, it, it, it just naturally came out of that. Uh, but in, uh, now with this 3D topological invari uh, insulators, we're dealing with four topological invariants. So how do we experimentally measure this topological invariance? Now, unlike Churn number, these invariants are related to the parities of the wave function, which is more subtle, I mean, the parity product and all that. Uh, and these invariants do not necessarily appear uh, in some response function where, uh, uh, where it naturally is a prefactor. Uh, or it, it, it cannot be just directly measured as a response function. Uh, uh, except for the first one, it can be uh, measured in a magnitude electric uh, uh, as a fun as a magnitude electric quantization of the system uh, uh, 3d response uh, magnitude electric response but these invariants are not connected to any of those invariants so so now to identify the 3d topological states we need a technique that can go even uh, deeper than that, more fundamentally uh, sensitive to the electron wave function. So our approach, experimental approach, is to uh, to image these electrons in the bulk and the surface uh, uh, in a way that we uh, we cover all the degrees of freedom. So the electrons have energy, momentum, and spin, and they can be on the surface or they can be on the bulk. So if you can find a technique that can image the electrons uh, with certain details of the wave functions and the bulk and the boundary, then we have a complete handle of the topology because it doesn't depend on anything else. So, uh, so that it turns out that, uh, and then now, now so, so it turns out that uh, angle result photo emission spectroscopy that can achieve that. Uh, it's a, just a modern version of Einstein photoelectric effect done with a uh, powerful X-ray source uh, or laser source and with, uh, uh, with uh, highly sensitive uh, detection technique. So, uh, and then including spin sensitivity. So then if we can image all these electrons on the surface and the bulk, and then we can try to put things together, and these, these images will tell us about this topological invariant. So that's, that's one, one way of doing it. Uh, and now, before we move, so we can see that these are uh, these are parity-based invariants, so they are double valued, zero or one. So then you can see that in 3D there are 16 di different types of insulators, and one of them all trivial because uh, this if, if if these invariants are zero 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 zero, then it's a trivial um, uh, insulator. Uh, silicon is. Uh, is, is, is one example. And, uh, but then uh, if one of these invariants uh, is non-trivial, say it's uh, um, non-zero, then we could get a, a, a 3D topological insulator. So, so the now you can see that in 3D there should be 15 distinct types of uh, topological insulators. And uh, our goal here is to figure out which one is which. So, you know, th there are many compounds with uh, strong spin-orbit coupling, and by imaging surface and bulk and trying to image these invariants in a direct way, 
we can uh, tell you which uh, compound is realizing uh, which topological state in 3D. So I'll not give you a lot. Uh, I'll give you one example. This is the simplest example that will give you a feel for what it is. Uh, so what we are doing here, uh, this is one of the first 3D topological insulators, the bismuth selenide and tellurite. In this case, if you look at the bulk band structure, you see it's superimposed on the, on the surface. Uh, you see there is a linear crossing. And if you just look at the Fermi surface, then there is a single Fermi surface in the interbrion zone. And each, uh, and then each crossing, uh, it, the Fermi surface, each point on the Fermi surface is singly polarized. And if we do a spin scan, then we see it's uh, uh, polarization down and polarization up with respect to some reference. But what it matters is that uh, polarization is reversing as you uh, go around the Fermi surface. And you can see that if you, this is kind of like half Rashba. In a, in a Rashba case, uh, you have two copies of the Fermi surface, right? So when you have one single uh, copy of the Rashba, you immediately see that the, now the Berry phase is half of uh, Rashba. In, in, in this case, it's pi Berry phase. So there is something non-trivial about it. So then what we do, we uh, not only image this uh, surfaces, we also image the bulk, and then we also uh, image uh, um, uh, these states by uh, scanning the chemical potential uh, across the map. So what we see is that uh, uh, no matter who you, you place the chemical potential in the gap, you always have uh, these surface states. And, uh, and then their spin texture is is reversed as you go through the Dirac node. So this guarantees that you always have uh, odd number of crossing as you count from the center of the zone to the, uh, to the boundary. So then you have, uh, 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 you have a single uh, uh, crossing. And okay, so then why is this interesting? So we, if we then draw the real space image that K plus going to the uh, uh, this wave packet to the right is, is spin down and this is uh, spin up and that's all we have on the surface. So now you can see that uh, uh, in, a, uh, in a situation like that, uh, you cannot backscatter. Uh, so this uh, spin texture uh, uh, is not allowing you to backscatter. So this is, uh, this is one way the 2D surface state, 2D uh, electronic states on the surface of topological materials are uh, 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 distinct from other types of uh, 2D electron gas systems. So this absence of backscattering, you can also see that in STM. And, uh, uh, um, and then you can map from ARPES uh, Fermi surface to the STM uh, uh, quasi-particle interference pattern. Okay, so then uh, how do we know that these uh, these uh, these states exist uh, uh, outside of vacuum. So all these experiments I showed, they're un, uh, they're performed under ultra high vacuum, and the surface is prepared in a special way. So one way to probe that, check that you have surface state is, is to do transport. Now, if you have sufficiently uh, bulk insulating topological insulators your uh, transport signal will be mostly coming from the surface because only surface is conducting. And if the surface is conducting, then you'll see, uh, so it's a 2D electron system, 2D e electron gas system. So then you should be able to see the uh, Hall quantization. So uh, in the, in the uh, transport geometry, your both top and bottom surfaces contribute. So then your half integer and half integer uh, add up to an integer. So then uh, if you do transport, you'll see this uh, integer quantum Hall effect. So, uh, so, so for that reason, I think when people studied these materials with transport, they never found anything that unusual because uh, you know, integer quantum Hall is not a new thing. So, but this also highlights uh, why transport is not immediately telling you whether you are working with a topological insulator surface or with a, uh, with a conventional 2D electron system. 
they're finer checks, but then uh, it, it gets more complicated. But this, for our, my purposes, what it is telling us that we're combining that with spectroscopy. We see that on the surface, we have a single Dirac cone. We can count the number of degrees of freedom, and then uh, all these numbers match up. So the primary evidence for topological nature of the surface state uh, is coming from the uh, from spectroscopy. You can also do more complicated transport to make a distinction. Uh, people are uh, still trying to do many of that stuff. So now, uh, as I said, the integer quant uh, quantum Hall effect is, pro is the first example of uh, topological states in 2D, at least. Uh, and uh, my experimental point of view, uh, from experimental point of view, much of the quantum Hall physics is happening at low temperature with a high field, right? So what 3D topological insulators and materials brought us that you can access, you have access to uh, topological states without, a mag external, without any external magnetic field and up to room temperature. This is one of the early demonstration we had that these uh, helical Dirac fermions, they survive up to room temperature and this, uh, their uh, backscattering is also uh, 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 can be tracked. And, and then this also allows us to count uh, the, uh, the density of states uh, in the systems and then we can show that they, they are, this is like half Dirac bias. So what, what, it is in, what is interesting is that now we can see topological effects at room temperature without magnetic field and that uh, makes uh, the device or application community excited about these things because you, you, you want to operate at room temperature without a field. So that's one of the reasons many people are working on it. So I did not go over uh, all the details of topological surface states. We have worked on some of that stuff and this is uh, uh, detailed in this review article, uh, including uh, transport that, that uh, was happening back then. Uh, so. Um, but the, but the key thing to remember is that you have a single Dirac cone and there is a band inversion in the bulk. So, uh, and then the band inversion creates uh, the topological twist. So I will connect that to the vial physics. I'll, uh, for the rest of the talk, I'll show how uh, tuning a topological insulator uh, can uh, give rise to vial semi-metal physics. Okay, so before I do that, I, 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 I should mention that uh, 3D topological insulators can be used to do a whole lot of things. I have only listed things that are more topological in the sense that uh, can we use topological insulator to create other novel topological states of matter. Uh, for example, we can create this Jackie Rabbi type of states, SSH type states, uh, topological magnets, topological superconductors by inducing superconductivity uh, 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 and, and then also using that to realize things like SYK. Uh, so uh, we, we're working on all of this stuff. So, but here I'll just focus on two things. These two things, they're kind of connected and also it's a theme of this workshop. Uh, but if you're interested, how you could use topological insulators to do things like SYK, there's a black hole on a cheap idea, I'm happy to chat with you, or more uh, basic stuff like Jackie Bravi type states. Okay, so uh, from, from now on, the stuff, the experiments that I will be talking about are collective efforts of my students and postdocs, uh, Ilya Belopolsky, Guang Bian, uh, Gochin Chang, Gyashin, Sonia, Suyang, some of them have left uh, the group and found their positions. Su Yang is joining Harvard uh, next year. Uh, and Guang is in uh, Missouri. Uh, and, uh, and then we, 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 we have a list of collaborators uh, uh, worldwide. Uh, and the, in this particular talk, I'll talk about uh, uh, data on samples that are taken by Shuang, uh, prepared by Shuang. Shankor and also Nitin Shamart. And then we, we, uh, we, some of, uh, we also have a 
grant for doing uh, FP, DFT type of work. Uh, there's a list of collaborators here. Okay, so uh, the, the topological insulator Dirac cone we have seen, uh, if you go back to my second slide, I talked about time reversal symmetry. The, the one edge, uh, chiral edge state, then you add another one, so that gives you time reversal symmetry, and this is protected by time reversal symmetry. So what happens if we break time reversal symmetry on the surface of a topological insulator, then the, the Dirac point is not protected, okay? So then you will have a gap, so you'll create a uh, massive Dirac fermion, or uh, it's a gapped Dirac uh, uh, state. So uh, there are two ways to create that. One is you dope magnetic impurities in the bulk of the topological insulator, or you deposit magnetic impurities on the surface. And we have done both, and we found that even if the magnetic dopants are not homogeneous, from spectroscopic measurements, we can tell that uh, there is uh, almost always uh, there is time reversal symmetry breaking, affecting the Dirac cone in momentum space, which is interesting. It's not immediately obvious why that should be so, because we're working in momentum space, K space, why we should see a nice gap, relatively nice gap, when the magnetic uh, impurity, magnetic field is not necessarily homogeneous. But this is an experimental fact that has been established. We, now we can see that there is a gap, gapping behavior here, and uh, the nice Dirac uh, uh, crossing is, is lost. And this is correlated with the fact that uh, there's a surface magnetization that uh, we can correlate with the uh, uh, presence or absence of hysteresis, okay? We can do more finer experiments to understand the origin of the gap. I mean, there could be some extrinsic origin of the gap. So what we did uh, is that we doped these topological insulators with non-magnetic impurities and magnetic impurities and see under what condition you have uh, the Dirac cone is destroyed. So what we found is that if you dope them with magnetic impurities, so then uh, this is an example of that, and then measure the spin texture near the band edge, the, where it looks like there is a gap. So we see that uh, uh, if you have a Dirac cone in the undoped topological insulator, the spin texture is like that. I showed uh, a few scans of that. But here, when you have, even if you have states here, the spin texture is different. For example, if you place your Fermi level here, there's a net moment on the Fermi surface, on the surface, on the surface Fermi surface, right? That is not the case in the topological insulator that is undoped. And uh, the, the way the spin texture is disrupted in the doped, uh, magnetically doped case, it, it has a characteristic uh, uh, signature. And not only that, it also has a temperature dependence. So that is telling us that uh, it's related to interaction uh, that is involved. So, uh, so then we did a lot of the systematics that uh, uh, there, could, there could also be, a, in a thin film, there could be a tunneling gap. If it's surface talk, uh, surfaces talking to each other, it could be a gap. Then we can, but we can measure the spin texture and s figure out what is the signature of spin texture disruption when the gap is due to tunneling. Uh, or uh, when, the, uh, uh, when the gap is due to uh, uh, magnetism. So what we find is that when the gap is due to magnetism, if you place your chemical potential here, there's a net moment in the surface. So this is what we call hedgehog spin texture. So that means, uh, and then we can, now we can see that as you move out in energy, then uh, far away in energy, your spin texture is similar to the uh, undoped topological insulator. So in other words, if you place your chemical potential here, it will look like the, uh, spectroscopically, it will look like there is a pi berry phase. But whereas if you are up here, then uh, the pi berry phase is destroyed. So in other words, uh, there's a berry phase tunability that you can achieve by changing the chemical potential, at least spectroscopically. So this is a signature of a churn gap uh, insulator. Uh, it, it, it's a characteristic thing of the Haldane model. Uh, 
So then if this is topological, this magnetic topo uh, 2D uh, topological magnetic insulator, then there should be an edge state. So now the question is, are we seeing that edge state? So these experiments are done with ARPES. ARPES is not good, good for looking at the edge state, but it can look at the surface state. Uh, but uh, so our signature is that this very phase tunability and the spin texture. And then later on, people have seen those edge states in both in transport and other uh, scanning probes, uh, probe measurements. Uh, we ourselves did not detect the edge, uh, edge state, but it, 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 uh, it's a, a, a turn gap state. Okay, so then how, how is this connected to the file physics? So one way to think about it is that what we are doing to create the churn gap state, we broke time reversal symmetric topological insulator, place the chemical potential in the gap, and then uh, uh, spectroscopically probe the state. Now, um, we can also, th th there's other way of destroying the topological insulator state, or you could also say we start with a trivial state and then create, generate the topological states through uh, band inversion. So this is what we are doing here. So this is on bismuth uh, uh, based topological insulator where we are tuning sulfur and selenium. Selenium is heavy, it has large orbit. Sulfur has uh, weaker spin orbit. So then when there is stronger spin orbit, we see a topological state by spectroscopic measurement. And then when we go to the sulfur end of it, we see that there's a gap. The, Otherwise, if it is topological, there would be a Dirac cone here. So in other words, in between there is a transition happening, a band inversion transition happening. If you like, you can call it topological phase transition happening. So the goal, experimental goal, is to detect that state. Uh, where this, what is the critical point? Why is this interesting? Because at that point, now, there's a 3D Dirac cone in the bulk, because that's what the band is inverting. Right? So we can trace that spectroscopically. Uh, this, this set of uh, uh, images are better. So when you have a trivial band insulator, we see a direct gap. On the other end, uh, after the band inversion, we see an indirect gap. And in between, as we increase sulfur, selenium concentration, at some point we see there is a, a gap closing. And then by looking at the uh, KZ dependence, uh, KX, KY, KZ, we tell whether it's a 3D Dirac cone or not. So now you have a 3D Dirac cone. You, you can look at in these materials or, the, or in other related analogous materials. And then um, now the, the, the way 3D Dirac, Dirac and Weil are related is that now you have to lift some degeneracy. You have to break some symmetry. So one possibility is you break time reversal symmetry. The other possibility is you break inversion symmetry. So, uh, so, then, uh, so then you will get vial fermions. And if this, is, if this is topological, then there will be a bulk boundary correspondence. Uh, in other words, these vial nodes will be connected on the surface by a uh, topological surface state we will call, uh, uh, that was called uh, fermion. Okay. So then, uh, so one algorithm, experimental algorithm, would be to magnetize the Dirac critical point that will create a mass in the bulk, but then it, it will also uh, uh, make the bands non-degenerate and they cross and they will create vial uh, nodes. Um, and then uh, the other possibility is to uh, uh, make heterostructures where you break inversion symmetry or just look for analogous materials, crystal structures uh, in the database uh, where the inversion symmetry is broken. Okay, so then, uh, so then you, you'll, you'll get the vial emerging out of Dirac. And uh, this cannot happen in 2D because uh, uh, chirality is not a good quantum number uh, in 2D. It's not Lorentz invariant uh, quantum number, anyway, Chirality is a good quantum number, uh, is, 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 it's in 3D. So for that reason, uh, you can have massless Dirac fermions in 2D, but there is no guarantee that uh, chirality is a good quantum number. There can be a specific uh, 
reference frame where it, it's accidentally good, but in general, it's, uh, it's not a good quantum number. So, so that's why with graphing type of thing, you never got to vial formula. But with topological band inversion, 3D Dirac, you could get vial formula. This is, in my view, at least from experimental point of view, is why topological insulator gave rise to vial, uh, which did not happen with graphene. Okay. Now, there is a long history of theoretical development, uh, how the Weyl equation is relevant for condensed matter. One of the earliest is by Conyer heading who was at Princeton at that time. There's a number of uh, 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 theoretical paper appeared after that. Uh, the most recent influential work is by Murakami and uh, Juan Turner, Vishwanath, and collaborators. They brought the topological insulator connection to this problem. And uh, they suggested some materials where uh, the vial formula experimentally were not realized. And there are a number of other groups also suggesting materials where uh, this could be found, but it was never found. Early on, shortly after Arjvin's paper, I was also interested. Uh, we had a paper in a year later, where we suggested that uh, experimentally the easiest way to find it would be to do uh, inversion breaking, uh, look for it in inversion breaking spin orbit materials. And then uh, I had my students and postdocs search in the database and they identified a number of materials that, uh, that, has, that fits the bill, the, 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 the algorithm I described, and uh, similar Similar search was also done by other people in China and other places. So what is the main uh, idea? So this slide is kind of summarizing the idea behind, the, the algorithm behind going from topological insulator to file for me. And if you like, this is the key theme, uh, key idea of this talk, central idea of this talk. In topological insulator, you have seen that on the surface, you have a Dirac cone. So if you... If, uh, if your surface, Fermi surface, is, is a circle, right? Now imagine closing the band gap on two points. So then uh, in these two points, uh, uh, now you have, a, uh, you have a bulk band. Bulk electrons degenerate with the surface electron. Now the, your gap is closed. You close the topology. So this is one of the earliest questions I asked Charlie Kane that, okay, if I take it to 3D topological insulator, I close the bulk gap, our surface state protected. Uh, his response was it, it will not be protected in general because the surface states were, they were protected by the existence of the gap in the bulk, right? If you close the gap, then there's no distinction. The electrons can uh, uh, enter the bulk, right? Uh, but there is a way out of that uh, if you close the bulk in certain ways, then, uh, then it could be protected, but at that point it was not clear. So we decided to do experiments. We take, as I, as I showed in the last slide, that we take it to 3D topological insulator, systematically close the gap by changing sulfur to selenium ratio, where we get to a stage where they, I have a band inversion, uh, uh, where there's a 3D Dirac. So, when these, so these are those 3D Dirac points. Now all you do, you either break time reversal by magnetically doping the system or break inversion symmetry. And in both cases, now Dirac has to split. The degeneracy is lifted. So you'll have a pair of vial, uh, vial points, vial nodes. And on the surf, it's, and then they're connected. So this is the Fermi orbit. So having measured Fermi surface for many years, probably more than 20 years, I. This, I did not believe this cartoon because uh, we, have, we have never seen Fermi surfaces that are uh, uh, kind of fractional on one surface, right? It, it, it apparently violates many ideas in uh, basic math or quantum physics, right? So I did not believe that, even though this construction looks simple, I did not believe that this will actually see that in experiments. We, ha uh, we have to go and do the experiments and see whether there is a non-closed Fermi surface. It, it, uh, how, how is that possible? Okay. So the real materials are, of course, more complicated. It's not like my cartoon, but I will try to give you a feel how that relates to the cartoon. So this uh, tantalum-based 
materials, if you calculate, these are a calculation from my group, uh, if you calculate the, the surface, uh, Fermi surfaces, or for surface state, surface state band structure, and uh, correlate with the bulk nodes, vial nodes, you see that uh, it has uh, many of those nodes. And, and uh, so this, there are two nodes that project here on the surface. One node project here is the chirality of the nodes that uh, are the plus and minus uh, denoted by uh, uh, white and black. And then, uh, then we can also calculate how these, uh, how surface states are connected to those nodes. Okay, so then when we do, do look at the surface, we see a number of these, uh, these states on the surface and, uh, uh, and uh, so now we have to close, we have to closely examine their connectivity. So uh, how do we know that this Fermi surface, is this a closed Fermi surface or non-closed Fermi surface? What is our test? So one way we can do is that we can look at the energy scan. We can look at the dispersion relation and see whether these states co-propagate or counter-propagate. Let me uh, uh, move forward to show a cartoon first. So if, I, if I'm doing a, say, Rashba surface states, then I have a counter-propagating uh, uh, states at the Fermi level. Or if I'm doing a topological insulator surface states, same thing, I have counter-propagating states. The Fermi velocity, uh, is pairs of Fermi velocity possible. But if I have a co-propagating state, then if I uh, look at the uh, energy dispersion, they should be co-propagating. So only this type of co-propagating states will tell us there's a non-closed Fermi surface. Uh, this is not possible with topological insulator, Dirac surface state, or Rajpa, or any other surface state. So we have to check in the energy axis uh, whether the states co-propagate or counter-propagate. So we take a uh, unconventional cut. We take a loop cut on the surf surface states, and we see that in the energy axis, they're co-propagating, they're not merging. And then the fact that they don't appear here is not an image plot issue. Uh, this is, uh, uh, can be repeated. Now, if this is the case, then we should be able to find the bulk par counterpart those are, that was on the surface. So what happens in the bulk? Uh, let's uh, back out here. So on the surface, we see states like this, arc-like states, but not so clear immediately. They're uh, non-closed, but if we probe the bulk band structure deep into the sample, then we see that the Fermi surface looks like two points, uh, mostly, uh, but certainly it's very different from here. This like surface Fermi surface, this is bulk Fermi surface. Now we can image how the surface, Fermi surface evolves to bulk or bulk evolves to surface by changing photon energy. So, uh, so one of the thing we want to check that if this is our bulk Fermi surface features, then how does it behave in the energy axis? We see that when we do the energy scan, we see these two um, Dirac-like thing. But when you look at the spin, they are single degenerate state. So in other words, it looks like uh, there is a and crossing, like when you have a band inversion, but then they are somehow split and degenerate. And what is interesting, these two points we see are on that, uh, at the Fermi level. Now, so this is what is happening in the bulk. And then now we can uh, put together the surface and the bulk. So this is the bulk, as, as I just showed. Looks like there are two points within resolution. But when you probe the surface, we look like, it look like there's something like this. So in other words, and then we can see that uh, these arcs, where the, in momentum space within resolution, where they terminate, that's where these uh, vial nodes appear. So in other words, the surface Fermi arcs, where the states are co-propagating as opposed to counter-propagating, and they, they, uh, they, they match up to each other within experimental resolution. So here we are put, lay, putting surface measurement and the bulk measurement together, and we can see that the, where the arcs terminate, that's where the vial nodes are. And we know that those are vial nodes because they, are, uh, they have a spin texture, they're non-degenerate. Dirac would be uh, 
digital left, right? Dirac would be fourfold, and the white node is twofold, okay? So then we, can, we repeat that all over the momentum space and figure out how many Fermi arcs are there, how many while nodes are there. And this is our experiment. Now you can see that it, when I presented the experimental data, I did not refer to any band structure calculation. I could have done that. But so the, the, the experimental proof of the existence of while node and Fermi arcs uh, our proof is independent of the calculation. We did not make any comparison to calculation. You can go and try to do calculation, but in the process we also learned, because we can calculate these things, that the, since we no, don't know the surface potential very well for first principle calculation or DFT, you hardly find a real agreement. You'll si see some sort of broad agreement, but the real agreement is difficult. So that is the reason I also avoided uh, making a comparison I, and said that, oh, looks like the calculations, so we found something. So I, I gave a proof independent of uh, calculation. Uh, so this is in the spirit of topology. The topology doesn't depend on the detail. You, you may not know the surface potential. That may be different. The topological arguments should still be uh, operating. Uh, it's valid. So uh, the, the experimental methods, I did not detail on it. It appeared in 2014 in our first science paper, and then we applied that to the tantalum arsenide paper, vial fermion paper. In this paper, we already uh, uh, showed that why, from ARPES point of view, uh, you, near the surface, the Dirac node could be split. That's, that's because of the cleavage process. So, so if you like, this, this, uh, this was the first paper on now that we understand, this was actually the first paper on Weil, and then this was the second paper on that, and then there are a number of other papers, including photonic uh, uh, crystals, uh, uh, which is fermionic, non-electronic system. So you can call it some sort of bosonic type of thing. And, uh, and then uh, sub subsequent, uh, and all other subsequent work, uh, experimental work is utilizing our algorithm, how we determine uh, topology, uh, arc and uh, vile node topology uh, in, uh, without referring to any calculation. Question? Double is uh, like, the, uh, the you have a Dirac, exact double is like Dirac, but then uh, it's split a little bit, but experimentally we don't resolve. Yeah, I mean, it's not a, uh, yeah. So then subsequently, a number of transport uh, works have appeared, including some from uh, my collaborators uh, 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 detecting some signatures of chiral anomaly and, and other uh, anomalous Hall effect and all of that stuff. I'm not going to review the transport part, which is a bit complicated. But uh, the fact that we have a spectroscopic proof of vial uh, uh, quasi particles, emergent vial fermion in condensed matter that opened up the field for many other studies, including transport and optics. Uh, how much time I have left? Okay, okay, okay. So, so then I, I showed you, so as I promised that, okay, so this topological insulator to vial, this, uh, this theoretical and experimental conceptual developments, it opened up many other things. I'll give you one or two examples, uh, depending on how much time I have. So uh, in 3D, uh, it's not only you can have a vial semi-metal. Uh, I mean, you, uh, the uh, vial semi-metal is not the only possible topological semi-metal in 3D, uh, or topological conductor, if you like, as opposed to topological insulator. There are other topological metals in 3D. One possibility is that you have a, uh, a band crossing like that that creates a nodal line and then you can, there may be spin orbit or magnetism or something, then you can get a non-trivial winding number. And uh, if there is one, then there may be surface states. So, uh, so this is interesting because uh, if you have particle hole symmetry in such materials, you'll get a flat band, nearly flat band. Uh, so here, your topology dictating flat band. Uh, you know, we, we, know, we know about uh, twisted bilayer graphene where uh, the twist angle is creating the flat band, but you could also use topology to, use, uh, 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 to, uh, to generate a flat band. Think about what if I introduce superconductivity, will I get correlated 
superconductivity, ITC like thing in a topological flat band. That's one of the visions we had in trying to do this. Uh, but in real materials, it's difficult to have very good particle holes, significant particle hole symmetry. In general, a lack of symmetry creates some bandwidth on that flat band. So, 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 the, so, so it's a material SARC issue. But we utilize this idea of uh, nodal lines, uh, uh, interconnected nodal lines to define a topological uh, magnet that has a topological band structure. So, so uh, these, it turns out these, this type of nodal lines can intersect or intertwine in many different ways, uh, like hop link or inner nodal chain or outer nodal chain. Uh, so how do we know these things are allowed? We can write down a model Hamiltonian and you find that this, there's nothing uh, forbidden there. Then you go and look on, uh, in some materials database and see whether this is realized in some material. This is what we're doing. First, we are conceptually defining that we want to find such a thing and what, is, what should be the corresponding band structure and can we find something similar in a real material. So that is the idea. And uh, so, so we put forward this idea in this PRL. Uh, it's a theory paper from our group uh, that uh, by interlinking linking nodal line, you might be able to find a, topolo a magnet that has topological band structure in 3D and also operating at room temperature. It's like our room temperature 3D topological insulator because that's for experimentally those are dream objects, right? So here we are trying to find a room temperature magnet that has topological band structure. The surface will have nearly flat band. So it's, uh, there's a lot of experimental excitement around that. But the theoretical algorithm we uh, was laid out here. I'm not going to go over the great details of the actual band topology, as I said, that in real materials, uh, there are many bands, it's very complicated. So I'll, I'll sort of conceptually uh, guide you through the data. So what we are looking for is that a nodal line like this, on each node there's a Dirac point or a Weyl point. Uh, 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 either one will do. And then uh, these, uh, the, since these are topological objects, they're connected on the surface. So these uh, surface states will create some sort of drum head like states uh, 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 has been conceptually put forward. So then, then we, uh, as I said, that then we found the materials database, we found the materials that, that uh, fits the bill. Uh, it's not exactly what we're looking for, but something close. And we find such nodal crossing by scanning the 3D band structure. Uh, with ARPES te technique, you can see that when the, it's crossing, this is, creates a point. Otherwise, so you're seeing this thing here, and here you're seeing this thing, then you see a dot, and then you see this thing. Oh, so I'm, 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 sh I'm showing, on this slide, I'm showing band structure in 3D, KX, KY, and this, this is, Vertical axis is the energy axis. And then I'm showing experimental data, Kx, Ky, and this is the binding energy, you can see. So, so I'm scanning here. So when I'm up here, this, uh, this is corresponding to this energy, I see a band uh, like this. This is that, and then when I go, some cut, K space, an energy space cut, and then I, I go down in energy, in this energy axis, then I see a, uh, here I see a dot. So it's that dot. And then here I see this is, it has opening. Right, so we want to see in this materials, right, what is the band topology? Is there a vile node hidden in the band structure? Some, something, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we see that there is a crossing. So in other words, there's a zero mass object in 3D, so it's, it's a vile node in 3D. So then we, we uh, this material has many bands. We do that on many, all these bands that, that, that this material has, and uh, we explore all these uh, details. Where are the vile points, and where are the loops, and where are the surface states? So this is one example of that. Uh, so this is, I'm showing 
kx for particular ky and then the energy cut. So uh, this is based on DFT. We expect that if I go to ky value like this and scan kx and energy, then I'll find a vial node here. And then we can track that in ky by changing ky, and this is what we are seeing. So in other words, there is a uh, vial node loop in the in this in the in this uh, 3D Brion zone. Yeah, we in this compound, in this compound, I, I'll show that instead of hop, we are finding chain link. The 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 hop link is not realized. That was in theory, but in experiment, real experiment is the potential is never the same. So then here we found that it's like nodal link uh, rather than hop. Yeah, I'm coming to that. So then we can probe, we can isolate the bulk band structure and the surface band structure by probing their Z, KZ dependence. If, if something is not KZ dependent, then it's surface. And if something disperses in energy in KZ, then I know it's three-dimensional, right? Uh, I can prove that. So b based on that, we identify the signal here is coming from the surface. Uh, here we show that KZ dependence, that as I change KZ, it doesn't, that signal doesn't. Uh, so this signal corresponds to this thing. So in other words, these line nodes are connected by this surface stage that is a uh, drum head like. It's not completely flat, but there is about 100 millivolt uh, bandwidth. Which is, which is really good, uh, given that it's not a strongly correlated material, okay? So now, so all of that is RPES, mapping out the vial node and all that. And all these vial nodes will contribute to transport. So now we are trying to see what we measure in spectroscopy is there, is that a crazy thing or there is a connection to transport. So one thing we can do, we can take the RPES band structure these 3D vial nodes and loops, and optimize the DFT, because now I have the real parameters from the real material. And then once we do the optimization, then I can cal calculate the Berry curvature field, KX, KY, Berry curvature field. Uh, and then now I can calculate transport properties, because the Berry curvature field is related to anomalous Hall effect intrinsic part of the anomalous Hall effect. Also from experiment RPES, we know where the Fermi level. So then we know that this material has Fermi level here, and the Berry curvature field calculation requires knowing the Fermi level, how much you integrate from where to where, right? So we need that from a real material. When we do that, we find that based on RPES, we predict that this compound, if someone does transport measurement, this compound should have anomalous hull conductivity uh, on the order of 10 to the 3, little less than 10 to the 3 uh, standard units. So in other words, uh, it's here. And this is, uh, there's a, uh, there's a di near divergence here because then you hit some vial point. Vial points are singularities of very curvature field, right? So we, are, we see that we are below the vial point, so you should not hit the singularity. So then your, uh, we predict, based on spectroscopy, we predict that the transport should have uh, uh, a value in that order. So in this particular case, the transport was carried out after we predicted uh, what is the uh, intrinsic anomalous hull conductivity. So when we uh, extract the intrinsic hull conductivity, anomalous hull conductivity, it's 870 standard units. And it's pretty much uh, right uh, in the right ballpark. It, it's, a, it's a remarkable agreement. So the reason I show is that spectroscopy has reached a point, it has advanced at a point that now we can take all these relevant parameters and predict transport, not only just top, uh, image topological order, topological invariance, we can also Im uh, predict transport. and. In the historical sequences that people would do some transport and then spectroscopy, do try to do some spectroscopy to figure out the microscopics, what is happening in the system, why transport is the way it is. Here we are now reversing the direction that the spectroscopy has advanced so much that we can predict certain types of transport. This is 
uh, not just one example, we have more examples. I don't have uh, time to get into that. Um, one minute? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take a minute, thank you. So, uh, so this is my final one minute topic. So what we have seen so far, these Dirac bands, massive Dirac bands or vile points, all these things create uh, uh, un unusual transport behavior some uh, or optical behavior, right? So then here we were motivated by the fact that can we find materials where there is Dirac physics, vile physics, massive Dirac physics, a flat band. You know, in the last example, I was searching for a flat band so that it has strong correlation, many body effects, right? So it turns out Kaigome magnets are ideal for that. Uh, uh, even just by the lattice connectivity, lattice network, you have both Dirac fermion and flat band, right? Now, if you have, a, uh, if you have magnetism, especially out-of-plane magnetism, or some component of out-of-plane magnetism, those Dirac fermions, that time reversal symmetry will be broken, you'll open a gap. So in other words, you'll have a natural topological magnet realized in a Kaigome magnet. And if you lower your chemical potential here, you'll find flat band, you don't have to do, go to the drum head and nodal loop states, right? So, so uh, for that reason, searching for Kagome magnets uh, could give us, uh, lead us to uh, interesting new physics. So, so this is one direction where uh, you could spontaneously, naturally realize. In the first example, I showed so much materials and band engineering to realize a churn gap magnet. Here, it might just spontaneously, it might already be there in the material. And uh, same thing here, the flat band could be there. So, uh, so we probed this system with uh, our STM uh, measurements, and I, I'll not go into that, but I'll, I'll tell you that now we reached a point where it's not described by conventional topological theory uh, anymore. Uh, we are starting to find things where we are breaking out of that paradigm. So, so far I gave you a number of examples, topological insulator, vial semi-metal, there's a standard theory framework. What was lacking is that, uh, how can we find a material realization and see that? Now we are reaching a point, we are departing, we are taking off to a direction where we are finding things that are not falling into the paradigm. So this one example of that in this Kagome magnet, you can see the Kagome magnet has six-fold symmetry, lattice, right? So then your electronic states, uh, your uh, electronic structure should be sixfold. But what we see, since the time is short, what we see that it has a twofold symmetry. So that reminds you of some sort of pneumatic order. And pneumatic order is not new. It has been seen in superconductors or uh, other uh, correlated electron systems. It's a signature of co strong correlation. But not only that, what is new here, unprecedented, is that here, in this case, we can control the pneumatic order direction. So we apply, this is without any field, B equals zero. Here, when we apply a field in certain direction, we can see that we are uh, controlling the pneumatic axis. So that, that is unprecedented. No other correlated system we know of where you can control with a modest field, or any field, you can control the pneumatic order direction. And then when you, apply a, a strong out-of-plane field, your six-fold symmetry recovers. So then there's some sort of phase transition happening uh, into this correlated state. And then you can not only that, you can also reverse the direction. So this is, uh, in my view, is the first example in topological materials where we are breaking out of the theory paradigm. We don't have a clear-cut theory how to model this system, what is happening, because now strong interaction is involved. So it's a example of many body physics in the presence of a topological system. So there's another puzzle about this system that, uh, as I showed, that in the churn magnet, 2D churn magnet, or topological magnets, we, if we apply a field, then the gap opens, and the, the larger the field, the gap is larger, right? Here we see that as we, there was a gap in the um, unperturbed material, uh, there was a gap in the ground state, in, 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 I mean, gap in the band structure. And then when we apply a field, 
we see that the gap, uh, uh, when we apply a field, then we see that uh, the gap is, a, uh, uh, gap is actually decreasing with the, with the applied field. So it has this uh, additional twist. So this is something we don't fully understand. But uh, what I argue, I would like to leave uh, with that not only we have now good control of topological states of matter, how to realize them, how to manipulate them, at least at the spectroscopic level. Uh, uh, the next, our future direction is to achieve similar or finer control in a transport setting. And all this, an optical setting, all these things are beginning to happen. And one exciting, uh, another exciting frontier is to consider superconductivity in vial systems. Uh, let's say if two vial fermions pair, form a Cooper pair, what type of topological superconductivity you could realize. So many of these things will be explored in experiments. I think there's a very exciting time ahead. So this is my last slide. Uh, so when I started to teach at Princeton, that was what I was teaching, uh, that this is kind of matter physics. You have these phases, and uh, these are phase, phases and phase transitions. But I had very little clue and almost no clue that uh, 15 years down the line, I'll talk ab about things that just did not exist uh, uh, in, the, in, 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 the, in the field. So I think there's a very exciting development that has happened in the last 10 years, and, and the entire community working on topological insulators have tremendously contributed in advancing the field. Thank you. Have you analyzed the plateau hole effect on surfaces, of course, but uh, 